What's up folks, this is Dan from Discern. Before I jump into this video, just a reminder, the final reminder on one of these track review videos, the Kickstarter campaign has less than a week left at this point, uh, and we still have about $800 to raise, which actually isn't that much when you consider if enough of you fine folks come in and, and do what you can to donate to the cause, we will make our goal, fund this channel for another year. So please, if, uh, if you're a subscriber, if you're a fan of, of what we have going on over here, I'm asking for your help. Uh, we need your help in order to continue making content and to grow this channel beyond what it is now. Kickstarter link in the description box below, so please check it out, give what you can. Thank you so much. And with that, these are my thoughts on the new track from Josh Garrel's Gloria. Josh Garrels is a singer, songwriter, producer, composer, and all-around musical talent. Uh, his music tends to blend genre distinctions with one song being a, a delicate and tender folk ballad, and the next song featuring rap-styled vocals on, on top of electronically tinged hip-hop-inspired rhythms. If there was one general unifying characteristic or genre throughout his music, it would be folk. Uh, he features a lot of organic, acoustic instrumentation in his music, including cellos, violin, uh, banjos, and his songs lean on the folk tradition of rich lyrics that tell a story and, and carry an embodied message. His lyrics are very much like those from the artist John Mark McMillan, um, you know, Christian at the root, uh, but flowering through non-typical Christian phrases that take uh, deeper exploration from the listener rather than just a passing surface inspection. The lyrics are undoubtedly Christian, uh, but refreshingly they don't speak in hackneyed, overused Christian phrases, you know, in other words, Christianese. Uh, no, instead they use a variety of words and phrases, myriads of which are available in the English language to tell vivid and compelling narratives and communicate poetically as well as truthfully. Uh, Gloria is mostly an original song from Josh, not actually a cover or a reinterpretation of the well-known hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. Uh, this song doesn't feature the melody uh, from that hymn or feature any of the original verses, but it does include the iconic lines, Angels We Have Heard on High and In Excelsis Deo, uh, which come in at the end of the song almost as a, a vocal cherry on top uh, as he's singing these lines over the top of a choir singing Gloria and, and an exuberant and very full instrumental mix of drums, bass, piano, uh, and even a trumpet. Since Josh isn't doing his own arrangement of the classical hymn, the overall theme and lyrical message of this track aren't a one-to-one -one comparison to the hymn, uh, where the hymn focuses exclusively on the event of the birth of Christ, you know, what we think of as the first Christmas. This track, Gloria, focuses on a modern or a present-day Christmas night, uh, where the hymn focused on angels and shepherds singing praise to God, welcoming the newborn king. This song focuses on our, our reflection on that moment, thinking back to that first Christmas. The first verse uh, sets the stage with Christmas and wintry descriptions. Images are, are painted in the lyrics uh, and, and are very deeply nostalgic if you're a fan of the typical Christmas mood and backdrop. Uh, snowy night, uh, hymns and carols being sung, a, a still silence in the air outside. And beyond just the literal imagery, the lyrics also speak with a, a figurative bent as they use the image of winter's death that precedes the new life of spring to foreshadow the spiritual realities that are, are brought out more in verse 2. Uh, the end of the verse, uh, verse 1, concludes with, On this holy night we remember Christ. And it sort of captures the purpose and heart behind the Christmas scene he painted throughout this verse, you know, uh, more than just creating a, a warming sensation for any Christmas-loving listener, which I'll go ahead and throw myself into that category. Uh, Josh brings in the greater context of Christmas, remembering Christ, remembering uh, his birth on the holy night. And in verse 2, the lyrics move from the, the cold outdoors of verse 1 into the cozy indoors, uh, sitting with friends and family by the fire, telling stories and singing songs about the Savior's birth. As with verse 1, the lyrics evoke vivid imagery, uh, but they also reflect a spiritual reality where verse 1 reflected a cold outside, you know, walking through 
uh, lifeless, frigid landscape being overcome by winter's death. This verse welcomes you to a warm inside, being brought in and given rest through the gospel, through the birth of Christ and the salvation that he freely brings. This verse also has a few lines that, that directly relate back and tie back to the first verse. You know, as I mentioned before about the winter's death and the new life that spring will bring, the first verse articulates that by saying, all of life surrendering uh, to the death that winter brings in hope of new life. And in the second verse, Josh rephrases that section by changing some words, but, but keeping the structure and the framework the same from verse 1. So he beautifully pairs the physical reality of verse 1 with the spiritual reality in verse 2. In verse 2, the lines are, All of us are suffering beneath the weight, and death, uh, the weight of death and sin in hope of new life. All our hopes made good in Christ. As, you know, the life that lies dormant underneath the freezing snow in winter until the temperature warms in, in the spring and the glorious sun melts away the snow and, and provides life to the world, you know, to all kinds of plants and vegetation. In the same way, we lie dormant and dead in our sin and our trespasses, and we remain that way until the glorious sun, S-O-N, shines his grace and his love on us, giving us new life, um, you know, through his work on our behalf. Christ is sort of the image of the spring, uh, saving the world from the, the death grip of winter. But unlike the seasons, obviously, which cyclically come and go, uh, Christ's saving work and rest for your soul is once for all sufficient. It's eternally sure. It's not cyclical. You know, it's permanently everlasting because God's faithfulness and God's loving kindness is permanent and everlasting. And the lyrical tag that ends this song is, is an anthem and a praise to God for where this all began, you know, when Christ the Savior was born. After the song has shown you the, the spiritual truth uh, through these physical metaphors and images, the obvious response is to worship Christ, which is why it's so fitting that he ends the song with the few lines from the hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. So enough said about the lyrics for now. Uh, we have to discuss the music here because it is phenomenal. Uh, the first thing I have to mention is the most prominent and, and I guess first instrument you really hear on this track, the ever grooving and funk soul inspired piano. I cannot think of the last time I have heard a piano played in this fashion before. Uh, instead of playing broad chords or a plethora of notes kind of all up and down the keys, the piano is plunking out a melody with single notes performing more like a bass guitar than a piano. Uh, and it's amazing to me that actually the bass guitar is performing more like a piano. The roles are almost reversed. The piano struts around like this uh, jazzy string bass, heavily rhythmic and syncopated. Uh, and the bass guitar, as well as, you know, the left hand on the piano, the low end, just holds out these deep notes or, or possibly chords, just laying the foundation. And on top of this sound, the, the drum recording here is so authentically crisp and lively. The toms are, are resonant and, and tuned up. Uh, cymbals have a really nice metallic ping. Uh, the, the kick and the snare have just the right presence and, and tone in the mix. I mean, the drums on this track sound fantastic, as does pretty much the whole mix. I mean, the sound in this song is just quality. It, it doesn't sound mangled or, or synthetically mashed. Uh, you know, the mix feels lively. It feels authentic uh, because the lively and authentic instruments have room to breathe and, and create quality sounds, uh, which, which is, you know, a sound I think they really captured uh, purely and, and mixed very carefully uh, with, with great balance, you know. I, I think this song is just a great example of letting the instruments do the talking, you know, using the mix and the recording to let the instruments do what they're already good at, which is sound excellent, sound pure. Uh, there are also some other cool instrumental features throughout this song as well. A, uh, a chilly and atmospheric vibraphone uh, is featured in the, the instrumental interludes and in verse 1, uh, as well as the short instrumental bridge. There's a few strings, like cello and violin, that swell in towards the end of verse 2, uh, sort of lifting the music as the lyrics start to speak about the good news of Christ's birth. And as the song takes off with the sort of extended outro, the whole mix just fills up. Uh, 
A trumpet joins the fray, regally announcing the arrival of the King of Kings. A tambourine shakes and shimmies over the top of the drums, which are just growing in intensity and energy, rhythmically marching the song forward. And the song trails off at the end, you know, the instrument's sort of pulling off piece by piece. There's a, a peppy saxophone and a, a little buzzing synth lead that, that stick out a little more as the mix dies down. Um, it's almost like these two instruments, which, which kind of play the same parts as the left and right hand of the piano did when the song started. It's almost like these two instruments become the, the last guests at a party, you know, still sticking around, enjoying the atmosphere, trying to keep things going and moving. Uh, but of course, they fade out too, and, and the song comes to a very satisfying and restful end. Beyond this, uh, lyrics, music, I don't have much more to say about this song uh, other than I highly recommend it, and, and I'm stoked for uh, this new Christmas album from Josh Garrels. Uh, like I said at the top of this video, this album releases on Thanksgiving, November 24th, which has probably already passed or is presently upon us, depending on when you're watching this video. So go check that song out. There's some links in the description box below to hear it. Uh, the Bandcamp link down there will also let you take a look at the lyrics, which are really worth your time. Uh, and if applicable, depending on when you're watching this, go check out Josh Garrell's new Christmas album. Uh, I put a link to his Twitter down in the description box as well, so follow that link. You'll be able to find it from there. All right, thank you so much for watching this track review. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. New track reviews just like this release every Wednesday and new album reviews release every Friday. Subscribing is the best way to make sure you don't miss any new reviews. If you have a question or a comment for me about this track, about my thoughts about this track, or about something else, uh, you can comment below this video. You could tweet at me at Discern Reviews or you could send me an email, discernreviews at gmail.com. And before I go, I want to ask one more time for your help on, on keeping this channel funded and keeping it going through the end of next year. Uh, for this channel to keep growing, to keep improving, I need your help. Uh, so please follow the link below, support the Kickstarter, and, and make sure this channel, if it's a thing that you love, can stick around and can keep growing. So thank you to all those who have supported so far. Seriously, you are the backbone of this channel. So thanks again for watching this review. Hope this helps. See ya.